Chapter 13, The First Adam and the Last Adam Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3 seem to be a record of a short history. However, when interpreted spiritually, it covers a vast range of history. The story of Adam and Eve and the serpent should not be regarded merely as an old story of the Garden of Eden, just as most Christians view. In its history, we can discover the profound truths about the previous world and this world. First, concerning Adam, the Apostle Paul wrote, Romans chapter 5, verse 14, As did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. Second, concerning Eve, he wrote, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Third, concerning the serpent, the Apostle John wrote, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent, called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. The serpent who deceived Eve is the ancient serpent, who is called the great dragon, or the devil, or Satan. Studying it spiritually, we can find profound truths of the angelic world before the creation of the earth. Adam represents Jesus, and Eve, the angels whom he loved in the angelic world before the earth was created. The prophet Isaiah described Lucifer's rebellious actions in heaven, like that of the king of Babylon, as follows. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Here, let's look once more into the story of Adam and Eve and the serpent written in Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, physically and spiritually. In the Garden of Eden lived a happy couple, Adam and Eve. They obeyed God's command, and they were blameless as the rulers over the earth. Adam tried to obey God's word absolutely, and Satan could not make Adam stumble by any crafty means. God gave Adam a command, Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan already knew that Adam had firmly resolved to obey God's command. He could not attack Adam directly, so he tempted Eve, who was weak, in absence of Adam. It was not Satan's ultimate purpose to tempt Eve only. Satan was sure that Adam would stumble if he tempted Eve first, as it is written. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and they will become one flesh. Satan was confident that if Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam would also eat of it because he loved her so much, even regarding her as his own body. As Satan expected, Adam, who knew that Eve had eaten from the tree, also ate the forbidden fruit, for he could not leave her to die alone. Finally, they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. What does the history of Adam and Eve teach us? It is written, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. The first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. As did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. The above verses imply that through Adam, we can find some profound truth about Jesus Christ. In other words, Adam stands for Jesus Christ, and Eve represents the saints in him, as it is written. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So, the history of Adam and Eve contains the great truth of the relationship between Jesus and his saints. In the spiritual world before the creation of this world, Jesus Christ loved his holy people as himself. As Adam loved Eve, so Jesus loved them. As Adam had power to reign over the earth, so Jesus Christ had power to reign over the whole universe. Satan aimed at his sovereignty. Seizing the opportunity, he deceived the angels whom Jesus loved most, 
and caused them to sin so that they would be driven out from heaven, just as he did to Eve. By doing so, Satan schemed that Jesus would come down to earth like the fallen angels. Satan was confident that if Jesus came down to the earth in the flesh, he would successfully tempt him, just as he deceived Eve so that he might not go back up to heaven. As he expected, Jesus himself came down to the earth in the flesh to save the souls who sinned and sacrificed his body as a sin offering for them. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So, in order to save the spirits who sinned, a righteous person without sin must die. According to ancient law, if a man sets a sinner free, he must die instead of the sinner. The priests, scribes, and elders who handed Jesus over to be crucified mocked him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Jesus died for the souls who sinned, but he rose from the dead and revealed his glory all over the universe. Satan was surprised at this. Since the Bible says the wages of sin is death and the soul who sins is the one who will die, Satan thought that Jesus would not be able to save himself even though he saved the souls who sinned by dying for them. However, Jesus saved not only the souls who sinned, but also himself. This mystery was hidden in the Passover and the Day of Atonement under the law of Moses, given as a shadow. On the Passover, God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, the land of slavery, which represents this sinful world. And on the Day of Atonement, he placed all the sins of the Israelites, which stained the sanctuary, on the head of the scapegoat that represented Satan. And he sent the goat away into the desert. This was a shadow of the things to come. As the Passover lamb, Jesus brought his people out of the sinful world through his precious blood shed on the cross, instead of the blood of a lamb. And as the sin offering of the Day of Atonement, he atoned all his people's sins through his blood, instead of the blood of a goat. And he handed all their sins over to Satan, represented as the scapegoat, so that he could save all his people and himself as well. Death is destroyed if sin is removed, because it entered the world through sin. So if all people's sins leading to death are handed over to Satan, death too will be handed over to him. Though Jesus died for the sins of all people, he could rise again because all their sins that he temporarily carried on himself were handed over to Satan, and consequently death was also handed over to him. Satan, who was not aware of this mysterious principle, thought that he would gain victory over Jesus if he put him to death by charging him with sin. So he crucified Jesus, not knowing that all people's sins would be handed over to himself. After the resurrection and ascension, Jesus cast Satan, who was attending the general assembly of the firstborn in heaven, completely down to the sinful world, the den of death, as it is written. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Putting the above verses together, we come to know that Satan had the right to attend the general assembly of the firstborn, and he was not completely expelled from heaven until the crucifixion. However, after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, Jesus drove him out from heaven and won a victory over him. Some may think that war in heaven in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 broke out when Adam sinned, and that Satan was cursed and expelled from the Garden of Eden at that time. Actually, Satan had already sinned and was expelled from heaven before Adam sinned. However, 
He was not completely driven out like Adam and Eve. He deprived Adam of his sovereignty and attended the general assembly of the firstborn of heaven as the representative of the earth. If Satan had been cast out into the earth with Adam when Adam committed sin, he would not have been able to attend the general assembly of heaven. It was after Jesus' ascension, following his crucifixion and resurrection, that Satan was completely expelled from heaven. After being thrown down to the earth, Satan persecuted the church of God, and he will also persecute God's remnant people in the last days. So, Jesus is the last Adam, and the redeemed can be called the last Eve.